Hi everyone, I am Dr. Bhola Bohara, junior resident. I am pursuing my residency in radio diagnosis at Armed Forces Medical College. And today I will be talking about Sturge Weber syndrome imaging manifestation of case series. The aim and objective of this case series is to describe the imaging feature of Sturge Weber syndrome and to differentiate Sturge Weber syndrome from other neurocutaneous disorder in imaging manifestation. Sturge Weber syndrome is a neurocutaneous disorder or a phacomatosis which is characterized by angiomatosis of the skin, eye, and the meninges. It is a rare syndrome occurring in 1 in 50,000 to 2,30,000 people. It is different from other neurocutaneous disorder because it is part of syndrome with spectrum of vascular malformation. Usually it is a sporadic syndrome but nucleotide mutation has been identified in GNAQ gene in chromosome 9. It is also phenotype that is included in the cerebrofacial atri atriovenous metameric syndrome which is also known as CAMS. It is also known by the name encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis or encephalofacial angiomatosis. Usually they present with the facial port wine stain or the capillary hemangioma which are distributed along the course of trigeminal nerve. Other clinical presentation include ocular choroidal hemangioma, cerebral bile angiomatosis, glaucoma and neurological complications including seizure and development delay which are commonly seen. Diagnosis has important implication in Sturge-Weber syndrome. So does the radiological finding and diagnosis in imaging. Yet no consensus on criteria for diagnosis of Sturge-Weber syndrome is seen but the typical facial port wide stain and the MR imaging or the radiological imaging of tram track calcification, gyral calcification is diagnostic for Sturge-Weber syndrome. In regarding imaging, MR imaging is currently the imaging investigation of choice and in post gadolinium sequences or the post contrast sequences, the pile enhancement is the gold standard for diagnosis. Coming into the cases, the first case is a 20 year old male who presented with a small patch of macular area noted in the left periocular region. He had seizure on and off. On examination, there were no focal neurological deficit and the normal mental status. There were no mental retardation or the disability seen. On imaging, T1 and T2 axial images show altered signal intensity in the cortex of left parietal region. On susceptibility weighted axial images, the susceptibility artifacts were seen in the left parietal lobe in the form of signal dropout which is identified by the red arrow which signifies calcification. Also noted was the dilatation of the occipital horn of left lateral ventricle. On post contrast enhancement uh, was seen in the axial and the coronal section in the left parietal region. Also noted was the prominent vein and the leptopharyngeal enhancement as indicated by the yellow arrow. CT scan of the same patient showed gyral calcification in the left occipital region. Case 2. She is a 23 year old female who presented with left sided capillary hemangioma of the face. She also presented with a seizure and on examination there were no neurological deficit and mental disability or mental retardation was not found. Imaging of the patient so T1 axial coronal and sagittal section so there is hemiatrophy of the left cerebral hemisphere in the form of prominence of the sulcosis. The susceptibility uh, weighted imaging T1 axial and susceptibility weighted imaging so there is signal dropout in the left occipital region which signifies calcification which is identified by the red arrow in the images. The post contrast axial and coronal images so there is prominence of vein and the gyral enhancement 
in the ipsilateral side. Case 3 is a 13 year old male who presented with seizure on and off. On examination, there is no a focal neurological deficit and he doesn't have mental disability or mental retardation. On images, the CT scan, axial and coronal section shows gyral calcification in the occipital lobe, which is indicated by the red arrow in the images and prominent of the ipsilateral left choroid plexus, which is identified by the green arrow in the images. Also, the same patient shows there is a chiral calcification that can be seen in the axial and coronal section of CT. Easter Zoeber syndrome, also known as encephalo trigeminal angiomatosis or encephalofacial angiomatosis. The exact pathology of uh, Easter Zoeber syndrome is unclear. However, the uh, proposed mechanism is the fundamental pathological abnormality is the absence of an adequately functioning superficial cortical venous system. In absence of a uh, functioning superficial cortical venous system, the blood is uh, rerouted centrally via the medullary veins resulting in venous hypertension and stagnation. Epidemiology prevalence is estimated to be 1 per 50,000 to 2,30,000 people. Clinical features include congenital facial cutaneous capillary malformation known as the port wine nevus or facial nevus inflammas uh, which is seen along the uh, V1 segment of trigeminal norm. They also present with seizure and developmental delay and macrocephaly in childhood and usually the symptoms are hemispheric in nature. A mental retardation is observed in one half of the patient. Imaging the CT shows tramp track sign which is a well-known manifestation which is just a calcification along the gyrus. Calvarial and regional sinus enlargement can be seen and prominence of the ipsilateral choroid plexus can also be seen. MRI show abnormal enhancement of the pyometer along the cerebral sulcus on the same side as the facial capillary malformation. Gradient echo and susceptibility weighted image shows regions of signal dropout which signifies calcification. Treatment include aggressive treatment of the epilepsy either prophylactic or after epilepsy. The prophylactic daily aspirin can be given early surgery when seizures are not controlled by medical treatment. Differential include other syndromic diseases with vascular malformation such as clippel ternoni syndrome, beckwith Wideband and the diet Davidoff syndrome. clippel ternoni and the beckwith Wideband syndrome also present with the port wine stain, whereas the diet Davidoff syndrome present with the hemi cerebral atrophy. Conclusion In a person with typical port wine stain presenting with seizure, mental retardation, and typical tram tract, gyral calcification, and cerebral volume loss, Easter Weber syndrome is the diagnosis. And early diagnosis of the Easter Weber syndrome has implication in treatment. Prophylaxis for seizure and treatment with surgery for intractable seizure is common practice. These are my references, and here I come to the end of the presentation. Thank you.